All right, everybody, this is Ross. I finally have some time to do some videos for you guys, do some filming. I thought I would look at first uh, some of the figs that are ripening, and I have a variety called Smith that's ripening. Maybe you guys have heard of it. Uh, we've actually talked about Smith to death. Uh, we've done a number of videos on it. I've talked about it on my listings, on Figbit, talked about it on the fig communities. Uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful variety, and I've, uh, I have basically been a big proponent of it for a very long time, almost since I, I got it. Um, and there's a number of growers now. I, I, I like to think I had a lot to do with it, but there's a lot of popularity among this fig now, and I think it's deserved. I think it really is that this is one of those fig varieties, guys, that you just have to have. Uh, it reminds me a lot of Black Madeira and how Black Madeira is almost immortalized in the fig hobbyist community. You know, uh, if you are a fig hobbyist and you don't have a Black Madeira, you know, it's just one of those varieties you just got to get. You got to try it, see what the the hype's all about or what the, um, I, I hate the word hype, to be honest with you, because it's not really accurate. It's not really the right word. Uh, what is the, uh, instead, what is the, you know, what is the big deal about Black Madeira really is what it is. What's the big deal about Smith? What, you know, what all these people are saying about it? Um, is it true? Is it not true? Well, I find that if enough people say that something is true, it usually is true. And um, it kind of even relates, I even sort of relate this to science in a way. Um, you know, science versus anecdotal evidence. You have science which is either scientifically proven or scientifically not proven uh, it's never perfect i mean it's as perfect as we can get but if enough people are saying that a particular thing works for them you have to believe that there's some truth in it i mean i don't think these people are lying um, it could be that they just don't know what they're doing um, but i think most people who believe in something and are willing to put their neck out and say that something's good um, you should probably take their word for it. And I definitely believe that when it comes to varieties of figs. If enough fig growers are saying that a particular variety is definitely worth your time, um, you got to do it. In fact, for me, it usually takes about um, usually more than one respected grower that I respect for them to say that it's high quality. And then I'll make a decision based off of those two people, based off of where they live, their climate. And I'll say, all right, well, if these two people that I highly respect, they really like the fig, they, they appreciate the way it grows in their particular climate, then I'm gonna go out of my way to try to find it and try to acquire it and grow it myself and trial it. So that's sort of my big opinion is that, in all honesty, I think it's, uh, if you can find one other person who you respect other than myself, assuming you guys respect my opinion, um, and you have two opinions that you, you highly respect, I think it's totally worth growing a particular variety. I don't necessarily think it's worth just going off of my own personal opinion um, or one person's personal opinion. So for me, uh, that's always been a great indicator with this variety is that for years, I mean, I'm talking years, there is uh, plenty of growers that obsess over this variety, that really, really respect it. And um, I guess a brief history is that it's really quite common. Um, or at least people thought it was common. And when I had really promoted this variety and got people to try it uh, themselves, and said, it's a must try variety, guys. It's a must try, you gotta get it, you gotta get it. A lot of people got angry because they saw the prices increase because there was a higher demand and think about economics, higher demand, you're gonna have a higher price. Um, and the supply couldn't keep up with the demand. So you would have thought because Smith really was for many years a very common variety. Why? Because Becknell Nursery in Louisiana was a very big nursery uh, in Louisiana and they had basically promoted and sold this variety for a long long time uh, extremely long time um, 
There's a couple people that have posted information on this variety and they claim uh, it's of French origin just because this, the variety um, comes from a French family who I guess imported it or came from France. There's some other information out there that says that actually it's a fig from Croatia and if you really trace it all the way back, I don't know exactly, but I'll tell you this, that um, wherever a fig comes from really does matter and really does impact um, the adaptations and the characteristics of that particular variety. And uh, for those reasons, whether it comes from Smith or Croatia, doesn't matter because those two locations are kind of some of the better locations you can find a variety from that translates well over to a humid climate here in the United States. So if a fig does well in France, it's probably going to do well in the South. It's probably going to do well in the Mid-Atlantic, the Northeast. Um, there's just more climates that are like that, that maybe don't get a whole lot of season length. They don't get as much heat. They're more humid. Um, and because of that, they've, they've lived in these locations. Even Smith being in Louisiana for such a long time, has made it slowly adapt to those locations. And uh, therefore, it's one of the best varieties you can grow in a humid climate. And there's also been a debate out there in the past that it doesn't do well in dry climates. Well, that has been disproven as well as the overwhelming majority of growers growing them in the desert, in Southern California and Arizona, um, all report great reviews from this variety. So it's pretty much well adapted everywhere, which is great. Um, so you kind of can't go wrong in that sense. Another big thing that has kind of come up recently, which I want to touch on in this review, is that people have sort of been commenting on the productivity of Smith. And I'm going to do a video soon talking about young fig trees versus older and mature fig trees. If your tree is less than three years old, you cannot really give any sort of accurate opinion um, on a particular variety in terms of their growing characteristics. When you talk about vigor and productivity specifically, talk about hardiness, talk about uh, really just basic growing characteristics, there are gonna, they're gonna be completely inaccurate until you get to at least five, seven, 10 years of you having this variety. Um, now we can speed that up. We can speed that five, 10, 10 years up. And there's a few ways of doing this. So people who are really complaining about the productivity of Smith, a lot of that has to do with, I believe has to do with the fact that Smith really doesn't like to be pruned. It's one of really a handful of varieties that I would totally just say never prune this tree or almost never prune this tree um, or do very, very light pruning on this, on this variety. Um, that's a really big tip because some of these varieties, guys, they will be in a sort of a state of hormonal imbalance. And when you do pruning of any kind, whether that's during the growing season or whether that's during the dormancy season, you are changing the plant hormones. And I think certain varieties are more affected by that than others. That's a fact. Um, whether or not Smith is affected by that greatly, that sort of depends and maybe we'll never entirely know the answer. But I will say that one of the more important things with this variety, because it is an erect grower, what does that mean exactly? It grows upwards, guys. There's varieties that will kind of grow sideways there's some varieties that will sort of droop down, usually because they have a very heavy fruit set. There's some varieties that will have a nice angle to their branches, the right angle. And it's usually the right angle to catch the right amount of sunlight and to have the right amount of sunlight penetrate into the canopy of the tree. Now, if you have a very erect grower like Smith is, um, it struggles, I find, to actually get the sunlight penetration into the canopy. So what you have to do, and I'm, I do this now, I'm gonna be doing this actually this upcoming spring to all of the varieties out here is that if they need to have some limb bending, 
If I need to take this branch and bend it down a little bit, just so I can open the canopy up to get more light in there, I will. And that's been a big mistake with my Smith trees. I have many Smith trees now, guys, and they all pretty much have the same form. Um, you can see down in here, we have a main trunk. In fact, this was my mother Smith that is in a pot. We had this originally years ago, grafted on a brown turkey. The, the um, graft union's right there. Then we air layered the rootstock, brown turkey, off of, actually we air layered the top, the Smith top, with the brown turkey rootstock. We put an air layer around the trunk of the tree. And then I was left with, if you guys remember, the rootstock of brown turkey that was in a 20 gallon size pot. In fact, if I look down here, actually it's right here. This is that brown turkey rootstock right there. And I grafted a new variety onto it called Socorro Black. But the mother Smith variety here got taken off of that because I wanted to reduce the height. It was a huge tree. It's a very vigorous grower that Smith is. So what I did was I air layered this off. It took a while, a couple of years for it to recover and regain some vigor. But this year it's finally got its, it's some nice vigor to it. But you can tell by the form, even this, really these scaffolds here with the fruiting branches on them, because this is the three-year-old wood here. Then you have some more, I guess you could call these really the scaffolds. Uh, this is two-year-old wood. And then here's the one-year-old growth that you see here. And overall, I'm telling you, the form on this is just very upright, very erect. And even some of this is growing towards the center, which is then further shading the canopy. And even some of the branches down here at the, at the base, towards the bottom of the tree, if I can get this camera to focus on that part of the tree, it's probably not gonna happen, but there's some lower growth down right here compared to the top of the tree that just also is getting shaded. And because it, you're not getting that sunlight penetration into this canopy, it's just not very productive. And I can show you this on all of my Smith trees um, that have not been pruned heavily. So what I need to do next year is actually, I need to take this branch and bend this significantly horizontally. Um, I need to really do some limb bending and I've even done this on another variety over here. This one's called Verdino del Nord, but I did some um, bonsai wiring and you can see that on that branch. I can't get in there because of these nets, but I basically have done a little bit of limb bending with the wires to try to get them to have a wider canopy. So if you wanna have a more productive Smith, the, the way that Smith should be, because it is a very productive variety. People have proven this all over the country, guys. Um, you gotta do that. And some of the other Smiths, I'll just show you if I can get in here and, and show you some of these trees. Here's another one that's a bit young. Again, quite an upright grower. Doesn't have necessarily the, the right form that it should. Uh, let's see, I think I have another one right there. Again, just they're all very upright for the most part. And um, it's kind of a shame. Uh, knowing what I know now, <clears throat> this is not gonna be probably an issue for the future. Of course, your tree just may need to slow down a bit and get the hormones within it right. And maybe some of my younger trees won't necessarily have, or will have this issue. But as they age, at least on year three, year four, you're gonna start seeing, if you got the right form, you'll start seeing the production that you want. Believe it or not, it is extremely vigorous, this variety. And you see that tall branch over there? That's Smith. <laughs> that thing is uh, almost 10 feet tall because those poles are 10 feet tall. So it is extremely vigorous, especially if it doesn't fruit. So, um, it has a nice combination though if you can get if you can get it right you can't always get it right guys but if you have the right form you got an open canopy to your tree you will have a vigorous tree in addition to that you will also have high productivity um, so that's something i really wanted to touch on 
Here is a fig that we just picked before I started the video. And you can see it kind of in a way It kind of has a, a similar shape to a variety called Hunt. Um, even maybe a similar shape to Celeste with maybe a shorter neck, uh, a shorter stem. Sometimes I've seen them flat, more flatter than this, but this year they have been uh, reasonably small to medium size. There's often a honey drop at the bottom. This variety produces a lot of honey. A moment here to talk about the color. It is extremely beautiful. And people comment um, incorrectly that this is one of the uglier varieties. It's not ugly. Here it is not ugly at all. If you go into the south and you have a lot more humidity than I do, it's going to be ugly. You're going to have more sugar spots. As the fig ripens continually, the longer it hangs, the more sugar spots it gets. So if you pick them early, you probably won't get any sugar spots, but this is really the color of the fig as it starts out kind of green and then turns yellowish and then gets some gray in it, some grayish yellow colors. And then it starts getting these purple, even blue. It's almost a bit blue to it. Um, has minor cracking, almost no splitting. Doesn't have, at least that I have noticed yet, I haven't been able to... Uh, get one of these to dry up on the tree but i imagine it could i imagine it's not totally out of the realm of possibilities but let me cut this open this one's going to be a beauty this is one of the better smiths if you can really let them hang you don't have to really let them hang which is oh there's a lot of swd in here well i'm going to eat it anyway guys but we'll show you I've been having a lot of SWD. And the reason for that is I haven't been out here to put out my traps, also pick any fermenting fruit. And additionally, the birds have been getting at the fruits. When the birds get at the fruits, uh, they poke holes in them and then they ferment. The figs start to ferment. If you don't get those figs out of here, when they've split or they have holes in them or if they have big eyes, they're going to attract the fruit fly because they're going to ferment. Um, there on the left one has three larvae in it. The one on the right has none as far as I can tell. Extremely jammy, very uh, syrupy. Beautiful, beautiful variety inside and out. Now, <clears throat> some people get really weirded out by the SWD as well which as long as it isn't actually fermented fermented, it's totally fine to eat it. Um, now, usually if <laughs> there is some SWD larva in it, that usually means that there is some fermentation in it or it has started that process, but it doesn't necessarily always mean that. Yeah, well, That really sucks. <laughs> Damn. Well, it just kind of goes to show you that even Smith is not impervious to, uh, to SWD. So if you're not out here and you're not getting these guys cleaned up and you're not picking up all the fallen fruit, I have some fallen fruit over there. Um, I just, this is my first time coming out here in really a few days. So, uh, you know, if you're not on top of this and you live in a humid place, you're gonna get fruit flies and they're going to make your life miserable. Now, one last thought on this is that some varieties, believe it or not, just do not get affected nearly as badly by the fruit fly. One, because they just don't ferment. If they don't ferment, uh, well, they, they don't get it. Um, so if you have a fig that pretty much will not ferment and not attract that, that fruit fly to the fermenting fruit, you probably are pretty much guaranteed not to do that. How do you stop your fruits from fermenting? Well, you don't have anything exposed to the outside. So there's no holes in it. There's no cracks in it. There's no open eye. 
Certain varieties have a lower sugar content than others. Certain varieties have a better resistance to mold, better resistance to fermentation. They have the higher bricks quality, bricks count. How do you get a higher bricks? Part of it's genetics, part of it is how much you water throughout the year. We watered quite a bit and recently we've been getting a lot of rain. So it is what it is. Um, obviously next year we'll have to be much better at this. And I will, whatever variety I've been keeping track of this is that there are certain varieties that are getting hit with the, the fruit fly more than others. If I get rid of all those varieties, will I have any fruit flies for the most part on my figs? I think the answer is it'll be relatively low. Um, so any variety that seems to be more prone to this than others, it won't, they won't necessarily attract as many and I won't have as many then attracting or then infecting some of the varieties that you would not expect to have this issue. But this is actually the second Smith of the year that had about, uh, that had some SWD in it. Um, so yeah, uh, by the way, our productivity this year, I had about 30 figs off of this tree. So it's not like uh, the productivity was low, but it was low for the, the age of the tree. Um, and it was low for what people can attain with this variety. So um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this little video on Smith. Again, it's one of my favorites. Um, yeah, I highly recommend it. It's got these long finger leaves when you get more vigor to them. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to everybody soon, all right? Take care, it's a shame I couldn't eat that Smith. All right, guys, we'll see you soon.